the seminar is, uh, I think, very connected both to practical and pragmatic themes about technology, but also to thinking theoretically and really exploring different kinds of collaborations between technicians, artists, cultural workers, to think about space, uh, sound, uh, design, and uh, also to think more deeply about uh, sort of probing philosophical questions such as, you know, what, what does it mean to be human in a technological age and what are the boundaries of the, the human and the, the technical interfaces. So we have worked for a long time. It is an, an international art project within digital and real space, as, as we say. The real physical space and the digital space. Um, we have joined five countries and 14 partners in this project. It, and it's within a program called South Baltic Border Program. And we're really happy that BTH is one of our partners. Our lead partner is Lekini Museum. The places we, we visit, the people we meet, yeah, I know. <laughs> and, and the things that we, we really um, see and actually could grab. That is our world, in a sense. The world is not just about the abstract um, thing of a globe or something like that. It, it is actually very tangible, very physical, very... Um, or ma very material. And I thought this is a great structure for a book, for an autobiographical novel. I mean, if I write stuff, what I'm doing all the time, then you can like go through my wall, or actually in, in this direction, to get this narrative and this character. Like, what has he been doing? And by checking in and stuff, you get the description of places and environments. So I started to using Facebook as if I were writing a book. So it's sort of this comp computational orchestration thing going on. Not com it's computational at the level of orchestration, but not computational at the level of um, composition. So creating uh, lots of <laughs> of audio files and having them recombined so whatever combination they occur within the piece they still uh, have something uh, they sound something like uh, sort of incidental film music and so it is kind of a video of sorts but it's made in flash and and is uh, fairly heavily computational Argon is an augmented reality web browser for the iPhone. When we created Argon, we wanted to create a platform that allows people to create, distribute, and experience mobile augmented reality. And when I move the iPad or the iPhone, the orientation sensors in the device allow the image to adjust so that you get a, a sense of the space that is surrounding you in the panorama. In this mode, the organics merge uh, with the non-organic and the material with the non-material, revealing the technobiological or post-biological character. Uh, therefore, by introducing the notion of metabola, we deliber deliberately emphasize the existing proportions of ambiguity in order to build a methodology of artistic uh, investigation in probability terms. Or I can hold a map up and I can watch myself walk. <laughs> through the radar blip of the Google map. And so I'm sure many of us have done that. When you discover the blip follows you through, this kind of sense of putting your body in motion and um, watching it as it moves through a space, I think is very different and shows us that we have you know, very defamiliarized uh, reading practices, writing practices, signification, and the ways that we make meaning. We have uh, David Prater uh, who, um, Posed for me here. It is, in fact, a, you didn't know what it was for, did you? Um, a brave new world. Um, but the idea of how how are we reconstructed and where is the, um, the where's the human face <laughs> on these works? You see the man on the screen, 
And if you're kind of a curious person, you might get a little bit closer to him. And I'm going to simulate it here with just moving the mouse. And what happens is that he will notice that you are there approaching him, so he will look at you. And you can stand there, you know, and you just meet each other for a while. And if you go away, he will just go back to his kind of resting loop. But if you're curious and come close, he will look at you. And if you get even closer or maybe too close, oops, sorry, we take the next one. This is what will happen. <laughs> Uh, basically, uh, we found these uh, settings, uh, these milieus, and then uh, somebody would wear the glasses for you know 10, 15 minutes and walk around and just try things. And uh, what does happen when you do this is, in fact, that after a while, once the original confusion disappears, uh, you eventually you are no longer in your body; you are behind. In, in the camera, sort of. This, this is a sort of a brain some sort of brain transformation that happens. He was actually kidnapped by the technology, and uh, it disturbed the, the narrative actually of, of this whole uh, meeting here. I mean, the materiality of language and digital media is more questionable. You know, I mean, it's. It's a, a medium that is in constant flux. So where is, I mean, where is materiality, materiality really within language, within digital media? And I think like most cities or most people who work with public art are not really ready to handle media art. How can we invent an artistic, more artistic approach that, uh, which help us to mediate this kind of that or aftermatic interactivity. Uh, my project have this kind of liquidity in the sense that uh, uh, the work, the artwork is in the process, in the scientific methodology, in the process, in the investigation, and then comes a time when uh, you have these results, which in fact, unlike uh, what people a lot, of, a lot of times say about uh, art and science, that the artists are asking the questions and the scientists are giving the answer. In fact, some of my projects actually have answers. They give answers. You know, one truth I think we have is that after the apocalypse, we have probably both cockroaches and lolcats um, <laughs> will survive, that somehow these sorts of, um, you know, these artifacts that are produced sort of from the ground up and that arise and that somehow create these empathetic connections with no clear aesthetic models or the inspirations come from these odd little moments that push themselves forward or 